Hello everyone, Smitty Frog here and what's in front of you is the entire sprite sheet of Fraggle's Adventure Bird Adventure. Or rather um formerly known as Fraggle Plus. But uh, basically spreadsheet tour is a thing I'm gonna do every time I finish making a game. And it's like the equivalent of a Minecraft base tour, except it's a sprite sheet that I made for the game. And I'm gonna go into this completely unedited because this is gonna be long as heck and I cannot be asked I cannot be asked to edit it. I don't even wanna edit out my mispronunciations. <laughs> I'm not a native speaker, so I'm gonna sound jank as hell. But I hope that's understandable. But basically, this is a form of behind the scenes, you know? I'm looking at my second screen way too much, so I need to focus on the camera. Um, basically, I do this as a kind of behind the scenes to look at, I guess, a little peek back into the history of the making of this game because the way I make assets is I usually make a humongous empty canvas and then just go at it every single every single spreadsheet I made every asset I made is placed onto a single canvas the reason for this is because I think having to open it up one by one is way too annoying. I want to just be able to and then just edit this particular thing and then and then I can draw this and that. And that's why this become my workflow, so to speak. But yeah. And when I had to um, export them, I just crop them out. Something like that, and yeah. And that's basically how I made the assets. The good thing about this way of doing things is that usually I make one or two design for things, for example here. And sometimes when I decide on the final design, the other designs aren't discarded and instead are just left somewhere next to the final design so in the future I can look back onto them. I feel like the rules I have explained in my first spreadsheet tour but that time isn't the proper thing that I wanted to do because that spreadsheet was actually wiped and I had to recreate them so a lot of the cool history was uh, sadly gone forever but this time I didn't I didn't screw up. <laughs> So, where do I even begin? Where do I even begin? This, I think I start, I usually start from top left and make my way to the right or bottom and when I run out of space, I, I basically have to expand it somewhat, somewhat. And you can see that there's a huge empty space here because at one point I also had to expand to the top left because I had to make a bunch of crap here but uh, anyway I think I should begin and um, begin with our beloved Frodo boy so yeah pretty standard uh, that's his animations this is idle walking or running and opening his mouth this is for when he has something in his mouth and this is actually the old version he was just a chunk if I can open the grid um, it fits into a tile chunk into a tile grid and I uh, it was that way for a while because it's actually way easier to animate because I'm using a spreadsheet of course but uh, 
Eventually, I have to make it wider due to swimming animations having to take up more space. And after that, I was like, yeah, why not? I'll also update the list to look chunky as heck, just like how Kirby look. And so I did. This is uh, the final design for when he's chunky. And a little bit to a little bit behind the scenes, but I actually considered to add goggles to Frago swinging sprite. I'm actually kind of upset that I didn't add this now because they would have been freaking awesome. It's cute and it's totally pointless, but it's cute. Maybe next game, actually. And this is Frago with shoes, which looks actually cursed now that you get it. It actually has shoes uh, in the last game, but not in this one. And this is a tongue, which funny enough, there is a, a set of... There is a maximum length to how long the tongue can go out. And anything longer than this, the body would not... The base of the tongue would not just display. So yeah. And then there's the hurt animation, the swallow. And I don't think this is used because the object for it isn't used in the main game. And here's him spinning. This is entering door and this is him teabagging. Teabagging. <laughs> this is him teabagging which... Oh my god, I fucked that. I'm sorry about the swear. Um, I forgot to add this. Press down to duck, which is uh, useless, but oh my god, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> this is him doing the air roll, rolling thing when he enters the level. And uh, there's also him doing a pose, and this. I forgot what this is for, I'll be honest. This is a frog yelling at the witch, Lily, and this is this is what I called frog pug. <laughs> this is him dying, and this is even more door animation, and this is this is you all used for cutscenes, and I think that covers pretty much everything about the thing. And this is, I think, used for the cutscene as well. And this is for when eventually player gets the head, and the intro animation also changes to that. And yeah, I believe this part isn't actually a part of the sheet. Uh, this is uh, together as a cutscene sheet. And here we have the witch head, which is actually one of the last thing to get added to the game. You can see uh, I added a lot of frames. I drew a lot of frames just so it can look like it's spinning. Just like it's a very cool treasure. And I think I'm gonna go down into this direction because that will make more sense. And this is once again goggles. This is for when enemies go underwater. Which again isn't used, but man, gotta do that in the next game. And this is a, a mushroom object that player can grab and fling themselves forward, which never really gets implemented, but here's the sheet for it anyway. And this is a lot of feet, a lot of frog feet. Um, for what purpose, I forgot. This is one of the tiles, the uh, edible tiles. And here we have the entity tiles things. I call them entity tiles and basically they're functional. The flip blocks and the iron flip blocks. This one isn't used, nor is this one and this. I don't think this is used either. And this this sun and moon block is used, but uh, I actually change it to look like books to 
uh, make it fit with the witch tower theme. And this is the uh, I don't know the stand for the checkpoints and the goal, the goal bell. But eventually, this uh, was made into also the sprite. So this was ori originally handled in the tile set, but now it isn't because it's anno annoying having to put this together every time I want to play something or move the checkpoint. These are the doors. These are the doors and they're the old ones. They originally had like two only two frames but uh, I changed it to uh, having more frames so it looks more uh, nice and polished. And I'm not gonna edit this out but I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> I am actually thirsty. It's freaking tiring. So, hold on. <clears throat> you can see a lot of miscellaneous bubble spikes here. Uh, this, I believe, I was doodling to make the swim swimming animation. And here's Froggle facing ever so slightly to the right than he originally does. <laughs> and you can also notice that there's a slight color differences to its palette. And this is because this is uh, before the palette change. Let me grab this here. They are slightly different, I swear. This is used in Swing and Grapple and this is the Froggle's Adventure design. It was changed because I thought this card looks weird, but I'm gonna keep it in Swing and Grapple. And this is a Froggle with a comically large witch hat. And it was originally made just for the cycle being there, it wasn't gonna be an actual thing. There are so many things. And here's the original concept of Frago rolling on a ball. I thought it's cute. I saw... If you play Kirby, you know there's an enemy called Puppy Brothers. I was playing Kirby's Adventure and I saw the little guy rolling on a tomato and I thought that should be a main gimmick. And that was made into a main gimmick. And then this, I believe, I was uh, toying with the idea of Froggle changing color as his health uh, goes down, but I decided that not everything ever had to be well visually telegraphed, so it didn't happen. Uh, this whole thing is supposed to be it and this is just doodling uh, this is the Pico 8 Froggle design I don't know if people like this better or this one and here is I think this was drew uh, near the end yeah and this is like last last week <laughs> but basically um. I was doodling witch hats. It was uh, I was uh, eventually I was um sorry I had a short there. Um, I started with a design similar to Lily's hat. I then decided that I'm going simpler so it's easier to animate. This one, this is like a gnome hat or a wizard hat, and then eventually I settled on this kind of design. Uh, and then I changed the color to be a bit more pinkish, and that I settled on this design. So here goes uh, the hat design. 
I don't want to edit this video saves me, but I actually have to stop recording to go take a break. But anyway, so this is mushrooms. I have no idea why Julius. I guess this could be some kind of potential uh, collectible, but it was never really implemented. I really don't know how else I want to implement it. It was never really planned anyway. I just have fun drawing tiny mushrooms. I actually forgot whether it was also planned for swing and grapple as well, but I think that might be unlikely. Because swing and grapple's source code is so obnoxious, I cannot be asked to update it ever again. Here's the grappling point, but the middle is blank. Uh, I wanted it to be like, you can grapple this but once and when it's shown as this, you cannot grapple on it again before it returned to this form it was never really used I don't know how to, I don't know where to use it not really implemented either here are the tracks oh, we're, we're circling back to the entity blocks again this is also like it can function just like sun and moon blocks, but uh, it wasn't used. And yes, this is supposed to be a tiny frog feet. Yeah, again with the feet. <laughs> this is healthily. This is the blue variant. I thought the blue variant would be something like it gives you 6 health. And healthily originally gives you 3. And maximum of three, but I change it to it just giving you one. This I think I made it, but it wasn't used. It was meant to be a disappearing claw block, but didn't use. And this is I think wine letters, also not used. I don't see how it would make sense for Fraggle to climb up the map. A ladder. Here's the old sprites. Oh yeah, there's also these coin blocks that you can spend to destroy. Or really, I think it was that you're if you accumulated among enough coins, you can destroy them. So it's like a threshold rather than uh, you purchase it. I don't know, man. Here's different kind of coin design that never really got used. Here's several designs. This could be uh, actually, hold on, what's this for again? This is for the double jump cloud block, but there are they all designed. Yeah, I think this is what I think this is where the feet came from. The feet was origi the original glyph icon for the double jump, but it was too weird. It, it makes more sense for something like climbing rather than double jumping. So it got changed to cloud. And this is for Huan. Yes, there's going to be... Imagine a parallel universe. Imagine a parallel universe where everything is the same, but in Fraggle's adventure, the double jump cloud is this feat. <laughs> Anyway, this is the coin as it is as it is in game. And this is the purple variant, which was going to be the special collectible in the game, but I changed it to gem. This is when I was working out a design for the vines. And this is I think the final design which is grappleable. If that makes sense, but um, I don't think it was used anywhere either because only the grappling flowers were used. And this is society. Here we have the enemies. This is the first batch of enemies to be added to the game. I call this the bug. 
they are essentially the same but behave slightly differently so that's basically that this is assets taken from Bravo Swing and Grapple that I plan to have added as like starting mechanics that I can use but I don't think I added it yeah I didn't and um, this is also another one that was taken from Swing and Grapple and then there's the I think the very, very first design of Jim. And then there's the end. The end. And here's an interesting one. This is an unused enemy. The tortoise. You can flip them over by kicking it. Which is a mechanic that I don't think a lot of people know about so I don't think I can make great use of it anyway. When you, might you might be thinking, Frog, why don't you just teach the mechanic to the players? Well, because the kick is meant to be like used by a more advanced player, if that makes sense. Like, I want Froggo to be basic. You can go into it knowing absolutely nothing and complete it. So. This didn't get used, and it's also just a moving platform anyway, so I didn't find a way to use it. Funny thing is, it also started here. I was gonna make an enemy, kind of like Piranha Plan, where it goes up and try to bite you, but that didn't get used. Mainly because I think the thing that I drew here is absolutely ugly. It doesn't fit the rest of the game. <laughs> here's confetti. And here's spider enemy, which also... This was also taken from Frago Swing Grapple, but... God, I stuck at this enemy for like an entire week, contemplating whether to add it and what kind of function it should serve. Or should it just be a clone of these enemies, but... I'm glad I didn't have to add them. Here's, and here's the boss. There's actually a lot more variants. And I think over half of this is unused content, but I forgot to uh, deal with it and actually delete it, so they are still in the file somewhere. This was the old door design, which didn't get used. And here's the checkpoint and the goal. And just like I said, I think the goal was also incorporated into the sprite sheet of this thing, so that thing from the entity tile center earlier ended up getting being unused. And here I don't know if this was used actually. I might have deleted it, but it was supposed to be used for the shining of the goal bell. Hold on, let me take a break. <laughs> and here is several designs I made for the goal and the checkpoints, which they were taller in swing and grapple, but I made them shorter here. There used to be this design, but I didn't use it. Here's old Lily from swing and grapple. She used to have her face. Uh, obscured by the shadows, but I decided to not do that this time. So here it is. This is also one of the first instances of the witch hat. Here is the old water splash effect and the old cloud effect. The difference is uh, this uses black outline instead of the final one that doesn't use black outline, I believe. Where is the final one? <laughs> I actually forgot if this is actually a final one. <laughs> but I don't think this water splash is the final. This is the final. And I think this together is an entire sheet. And this part isn't used. This is 
the gear I was drawing. I don't know. I forgot what it was for. And this is the gem. Uh, this is how it used to look like in Swing Grapple, and this is how I drew it now. And the third row was only used for the final resource screens menu, and that's it. And there were even more stuff here. This is also a leftover from Swing Grapple. This is an enemy. I think this was a prototype for Grapple Jaw, which is the little guy here. He also has an unused variant, which I don't think I made something, anything distinctly different. Other than just a like palette change. So yeah, this is basically. It should serve the same purpose as Grapple Joe. You grab it and it bites you. Should be basic. I also uh, consider giving Grapple Joe the same palette as the health lady. I forgot why I didn't do that. And this is me drawing deer. I don't know why it's here. Actually, it makes sense because there's also deer here serving as a rollable object, which is also unused. Here is Dragonfly. Fly and B, which all three are left over from Bravo Swing and Grapple. Here is a new enemy, an underwater one, which I call Susie, because it sounds like Sushi. And this is an unused variant that would jump out of the water surface. This is Nautilus, which also has an unused variant that would chase the player. Oh yeah, this green one, I believe, is also unused for whatever reason. I think it's just really hard to use. Here's the old design of the urchins. And I believe this one is the final design. Uh, they used to look more chubby or skinny, but I find the middle ground, which is awesome. I made this thing that looks like a wiggler. I didn't I didn't like double down with this. I didn't actually finish this. But if it was if it was going to be finished it was gonna be something like a wiggler. Like there's gonna be it's gonna be in different parts and player, the Frago can just eat it one by one. <laughs> I guess kinda like uh, if you know Pokey from the Mario games, it's kind of like that. But it didn't get added because I thought it would be kind of annoying to program. <laughs> and this is a slug with spikes on them. And what this it was what this was gonna do is if Frogo eats it, is he's gonna get damaged and spit it off uh, right away. Why is this here? Oh my god. Anyway, this, um, I believe, is going to be used with this rolling gear, but it never really got used. Oh, and this is the process of me making this whole rolling gear thing. I draw it like that, and then I make it thicker, and then. I recolor it and then boom. And it's gonna play into like an event which you can use as a key to like activate tiles or something, but I forgot. And here's Jim. Rolling Jim and non rolling Jim. This is Jim, but not with the shell, which function basically like the bug, but it was unused because obviously it doesn't have any purpose and distinction. And this is another spider sheet. I think I know at that point I knew what I want to do with it and how it's gonna function, but I didn't went ahead and made it. I didn't go ahead and made it in real game. 
And here is the old sprite for the tracks, which actually has a lot more dots. It re resembles more of a line, but I made a new design back there. And here's the spinning platforms. And I believe these are all unused, including this and this. There's so many things unused, oh my god. And they are basically just moving platform that moves along the track. This does nothing, just a normal moving platform. This is of course used in the second level. This is a thing that accelerates if you stand on it. So you can kind of fling yourself forward with the inertia it gives you. And this is uh, this chain grabbing thing. This swinging thing was used in the third level, but this variant is, is not. But I believe you can press up or down to adjust the length of the rope. I don't know why I didn't use it. And this is the first, I think, sprite sheet for the overworld. And eventually, I drew more stuff next to it. And this thing has to get updated so there are more copies of it next to it, other places. I have to find more places for more copies to be made for it. Here's the warning sign for Jim. I think, I don't know, I want to make a way, I wanted to try to do something to warn the player about not being able to use the tongue on a gym, but I decided to just do a text box anyway, because since I implemented it, might as well use it. And these are the doors. And not much to say. And here are actually, there were actually locked door, but uh, maybe this, it was gonna use in the levels. No, actually, this is just for the lock levels in the lower world, but I changed it to this. They just dotted out wide. Oh, and this was also considered at one point, but this is very small. I don't know if people can read it that this is this got sealed off, so I changed it. I'm gonna give myself another break. And here is the flash animation for the gem. Pretty fancy, and then here's more mushroom for whatever reason. I guess I did plan to add it after all. Oh, I forgot. And this is Andrew. Andrew, I believe I named it. This was supposed to be... At one point this was gonna be the final boss fight for this game, but I changed it to uh, Lily because I later made a witch tower level for whatever reason and was like, well, wouldn't it be more fitting if the game ends there and there's a witch boss instead, so I don't think this get this ever got a proper implementation. Maybe I'll use it in the future. Um here's the um what's it called? The splash screen for Pi game. And there's also it with the full text, the full community edition text, but that thought you can see is way more clear. The point is I'm flexing that I made this in Pygame, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and I think we hit a dead end and we can start talking about other stuff. Can start going in the right now. Here's the original UI for the health, which I thought it looked good, but it looks way too shiny, so way too saturated even. So I went for a more pastel design in the end because I thought it was more fitting. And here's even more um, UI design. 
and this is at one point going to be this if that makes sense and you can look at it for yourself because I think all of this is pretty self-explanatory I think maybe I can talk about the title first because uh, I was uh, figure out what I'm going to do with the title and eventually ended up with this and here I guess it's a progress and here's the Chinese subtitle but here's the Chinese logo for the game but I'm lazy and didn't finish it and this is too way too small in comparison to the English letters because yeah not big enough so I didn't use it or even finish it this is the file select, the original file select. Not the original, but this is the concept for it because, um, how do I explain this? This was originally gonna be a big game with multiple different campaigns, and you can create a save file and choose what kind of campaign you want to play in that save file. Kind of like Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, so it looks that's why it looks like a cartridge. But this game, uh, I figured having shorter games that are way cheaper is way less risky than releasing a huge game, but I have to make it over a longer period of time. And um, this is the in-game font, if that makes sense. I um, this is the only like I don't know the only text that isn't using a font. Uh, using every other language is gonna use the font, like an external one. But if you're using if the game is displaying numbers or English letters, it's going to default to using the in-game in -game one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go down. This was the original title, which is Rocko Plus um, and nothing else. Uh, and then it got changed. And honestly, I like the new design better. The new Froggo is better even. And here's the uh, how do I say the intro animation saying "Frago Go." And here is the very first tile set I made for this game, which is basic. What can I say? And then I had to inject it with some pastel colors, and then expand upon it even further and I like this more so it is used in game here is a separate tile sheet that was used in the cave level that never really end up in the final game there is a gimmick that was used in this level and it broke after I updated the collision system I didn't want to fix it either I didn't want to fix it either because I'm lazy. I think this is the doodling for uh, the water tile set. This is a super long platform. It's gonna be as long as how I want it in the level editor, but I have to make it super long. I think. This is a bouncing platform which also isn't used. Here is the original water tile set, but uh, once again, I drew more stuff. I drew more stuff linked to it, so I had to make a copy of it somewhere else and expand upon it later. So yeah, this is inside of a well, which I don't think is used. And I think this is carried over from Frago Swing and Grapple. And this is the struggle color thing based on the health the thing I talked about earlier 
Here are some pipes, which isn't used. Never implemented in game, I believe. Here's some portraits. And Frogger looks dead in the eye. <laughs> and this is the old one, and it looks cringy as fuck. So I'm gonna move away from the, <laughs> from the screen. But anyway, here's more of it. Here's Frogger, but looks less dead inside. <laughs> and here's Lion King. Here's me. Here's Lady with even more expression. Once again, I'm gonna move it away from the screen because cringe. <laughs> and here we have the forest tile set, the original one. And uh, I thought it looked good. It was somewhat based on Kirby's Adventure, but I abandoned this and this. This was the forest terrain, and because uh, it uses black online, and uh, at that point, I think I changed the way, I changed the art style drastically within this tile set. So the forest has to change as well. So a new one, a more pastel color one, was made here, and this is, I believe, the swamp tile set, which also got abandoned in favor of pastel colors, once again. <laughs> this is tiny little swamp hut, didn't get used either, but I think it was also made into a tile set. Here's a tank, like just a tank here. There were gonna be an auto scorer, like a steampunk thing that has like tanks. And there was a level that also broke because I updated the collision system using this tank tile set. Don't worry, I think I'll I'll make use of it somewhere in the future. And here's me making somewhat of a mock-up of what the pastel forest tile set is gonna look like. And yeah, it looks amazing. And this is a grappler knight. I don't think I was gonna add him in any way, I think I was just doodling. And here's the bridge level, the athletic uh, barrier bridge level, the third one. It has similar tile set to the first one, but it's way more red, I think. And here is the final water tile set here. And oh god, I had I think this I think this is included in the tile sheet, tile sheet, but I didn't use it either. And here finally is the wish tower tile set here. It's all kind of painting stuff. And this is the switch block I was talking about in the entity tiles. I made them look like books to like fit with the environment. So there's that. There's also the yellow and green variant, which was only used in the cutscene. And here I was just doodling the wall to see what kind of visuals I wanted to look like. And I ended up with this and turned it into this. Here's Lily one second because I need to take her color palette to make her level. And um, I don't think this part is used. Oh my god. What happened? And this is the this is basically the pastel color forest but recolor to fit a darker tone but yeah before we move on I want to look at the backgrounds so uh, here's the backgrounds they are actually just like copies 
they are repeats and were cropped into a single image. And the way it works is that let's say this is the camera size and the camera moves along this way and when it reaches the end it returns. So it looks like it's scrolling but only one of this entire image is being displayed. There's no way there's anyone is understanding what I'm saying right now but I'm gonna explain it anyway. Here's the sky for the um the mountain backgrounds. This was originally green, but I had to change color because that way the terrain can look more apparent. This is the cave, the dripstone, the stalactites, and there's also this uh, underground river thing, underground lake. And it was animated, but it wasn't used. Only the dripstone got used in the end. So, and this I believe is the this 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 is the old forest tile set. Again, I replaced it, or rather, just completely abandoned it because the, the palette no longer fits anymore. And this is the swamp background. Once again, isn't used. And I made a new one for it. This is the deep forest background, which only uses two layers. Because I need to like minimize the amount of times I show a large image. If that makes sense to like keep the performance running to keep the performance well so so this is like basically a little concept art i made so this the background is basically this stack on this and that's it and the rest of the screen was built black so it didn't matter so yeah and this was a this was the kind of a concept art for the treetop backgrounds. And this is how it was first of all, but there was too many colors on it. It's almost starting to look like an NES, as an NES game. So I had to make it look simpler. And this is the final one, along with this as the scrolling layers in the front. And this is the background I use for the third level, the bridge level. I think this is actually the final one because it has a red, uh, it has an orange hue, as opposed to the yellow one, to fit with the tile set. Let's see, um, I don't think there's anything else in the top, top right. So. Here is the final, final um, overworld tile set. Here's his well and his bedrock, and the witch tower, the beehive, and the cutscene stuff. And yeah. So yeah. Funny enough, funnily enough, the many frog presents splash green at the beginning is actually just a tile set. Actually, I think it wasn't. I think I made it into an actual actor or an entity, but it was originally just a tile set. And this, uh, it was this was originally used as the border for the overworld, but it got changed into something like this because I drew this for the cutscene, and I thought this would also fit for the overworld. And I think this was used at one point for the number on the level doors. And I, I, and yes, there was, there was originally going to be only three levels, and this was going to be three. But I decided to make it a tiny, tiny commercial game. So 
here is the starting cutscene of Bravo. This is unused and yeah, I think this is all of them in the final cutscene. Not the final cutscene, the beginning cutscene, opening one. I think the spy sheet the final cutscene used is just the original player cutscene. So there's that. I think this is a fisher spinner. Okay, funny funnily enough, this was the original object that Lily dropped down the well. I couldn't decide on what it is. So I was like fuck it. It's a fidget it's a fidget spinner now. But uh, I decided a witch hat would make more sense. <laughs> this all sound dope. This all sounds so dumb right now. But anyway, this is her uh, Lily's uh, original cutscene sprite, and as you can see, she was still holding a fidget spinner. <laughs> and then, I don't think there's anything else here. Notable about the old version, and then this is the concept art. I don't think it was a concept art, but this was just um, just a test for the casting. The red, the rough size would be in comparison of the whole screen, basically, and this is. Um, this is actually the the what the concept art for the cutscene thing. This was the old one, and this is the final one for the border. And yeah, there's more cutscene stuff here, and this is the final design for the cutscene. Uh, final design for uh, Lily in the opening casting and this is her door like just her door like this entire thing is the surprise sheet and this is the scrolling background in the sky in the opening casting and here is the final final version of the portrait and here's slime king for no reason Actually, looking back, I should have drew a more cartoony version. I should have drew a more cartoony depiction because I think it would fit the more cute nature of this game. But uh, I like the final result nonetheless. At this for now, maybe I'll cringe at it in three days. Who knows? And here's the crystals. This is a trap. Uh, this is the first ever iteration of it, which looks ugly as hell. Somehow it ended up in this, which I'm happy it did, because this this looks ugly as heck. So originally it was gonna like eat, like throw crystals at us. I changed it to her knocking out magic orb out of her crystal. I think it would be more straightforward for me to make to make, so there's that. And for people who have played swing and grapple, I think this should be familiar because this was used as a mechanic in the witch tower level. It's like a crystal that you can knock and gives you temporary light. I was gonna add it but I gave up and just instead focus on a few mechanic mechanics that I already had. And here's Lily, the witch. And God, there's so many there's way too many things I made here. This game was really close to not having a final boss fight, but I decided to add it anyway because it would 
it would just make sense. I don't know. And here, I think I think everything here is just doodling, or at least not included in the final spreadsheet. And I think this was never used. I could be wrong, but here's her running. Uh, this this was all without her cape, by the way, because her cape was actually separate. It's right here, and here's her broom, which is spinning. And I put a lot of effort into her animation, as you can probably tell. So um, this is her attack animation. I have to draw it without her cape first, and then I added the, the what? Um, how do I explain this? I think I would. It would be easier to explain it later. But basically, here's her running animation. Here's her being knocked away. Here's her on the ground and recovering. And this is her getting up. I feel like I just like put a huge unnecessary amount of effort into a one dollar video game. It's not even a dollar, but you get the idea. Here's her uh, attack animation. She spins her broom, which reveals a crystal which was was uh, drawn separately as another thing and then she knocks it and you could probably some people may already know this but her cape isn't fully present that's because it's displayed like differently because I want her cape to be dynamic dynamic I want it to like reflect her movements so it looks smooth and here it is. This is when she's running. This is when she's fallen down. And this is this is when she's fallen down. And this is also kind of the same. But uh, this is largely used for her transitioning from falling down to standing still. And this is just her falling down. So. I would also like to point out that the cape was. Uh, I used Mario's cape from Mario World for reference when drawing this. And the result is. I keep looking at this and thought, man, this looks like bacon. <laughs> is it weird to say this looks like bacon? But green? Well, maybe I'm just weird, but... Anyway, the attack animation actually includes the cape, because... I think it would be easier to, like, animate that, because it doesn't have to be separate. Because she's standing still anyway, so... The separate cape isn't present, instead it was uh, just shown here, on her main sprite. And this part, I think, is only used for the cutscenes. And I think that's pretty much everything in terms of these sprites and every single sprite in the game. This thing is huge. Like, I think I'm finally done with this. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, it's mostly done. This is huge. Let me turn off the grid again. And take a final bit of scan across this entire humongous thing. And yeah. Mm. 
And that was basically it. I don't think I have anything to else to show. Yeah. But yeah, ever since the first Spicy Tour, I've been looking forward to this one. There's a reason why, because it's just a really cool video to make. Like, look at this. Look at this entire thing. Like, it's cool to, like, look down on the stuff that you already accomplished after you made the entire thing. But anyway, I think I look forward to the next spicy tour. But uh, I think um, I think this is pretty much it for now. God, I'm taking a long time to do the outro. Hmm. I hope you enjoy this and look forward to more stuff in the future. And once again, thanks for playing the game. And thank you for your support. I'll see you next time.